Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the GameVice Flex. This is a game controller that works with Android phones along with iPhones. And what you do is dock your phone in it, like so, and you get yourself a full-on game controller that's hardwired in over USB Type-C. And it'll work with games that are native on your phone, but also game streaming services. And if you're looking at this thinking, hey, this looks a lot like the Razer Kishi, that's because the manufacturer of this says that they are the ones that made the original Kishi and licensed it out to Razer. And this one feels like a new and improved version of the Kishi, and it does fix some of the problems that I identified in that device when I first reviewed it about a year ago. And we're going to take a closer look at this one along with its iOS counterpart here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that both controllers were provided to the channel free of charge. However, no one is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is paying for what you're about to watch. Let's get to it now and see what these controllers are all about. Now, at the time I'm recording this review, these come in at around $100. The iOS version costs a little bit more, likely because of the Apple tax. Like the Kishi that we looked at last year, these fold up and have a little clamp here that uh, gets it all connected so you can travel with it pretty easily and then it will stretch out to accommodate the phone that you're putting into it. This will take larger phones on the Android side, like the Galaxy Note and the Samsung S22, and it is not, though, big enough to accommodate a tablet like an iPad mini or something like that. So it's mostly limited to phones at this point, but it should be able to accommodate most of what you put in. Now, one thing they really put a lot of effort into on this device is making sure your phone will fit, even if it has a case. One of the controllers that I love on the iOS side is called the Backbone Controller, but you have to take your phone out of the case to use it. This one actually thought that problem through and provided, I think, a pretty good solution. So right now, I've got my biggest phone docked in this right now. This is a Google Pixel 4 XL with a case on. And it actually fits very snugly here, and I'm not getting a lot of flex on the controller. It actually feels pretty nice, a lot nicer than the Kishi felt with this very same phone. And what they've done to accommodate cases is give you a whole bunch of tools in the box here to get the fit just right. So the whole bottom portion of the box is all about fit and finish. So what you're going to see here is a little card, and I think you're going to want to keep all of this stuff secured somewhere if you ever change phones. And what you do with the card here is you put your phone into these little slots to see which one fits best. And then from there, it will give you recommendations about which adapters you need to insert into your controller to make it fit. And so as you can see here, if we were to go with uh, the second option here, what we would need is L35 out of the red box and R20A out of the dark blue box. And when you open up each of these boxes, you're going to find a whole bunch of different adapters here that will fit different types of cases. And when you match everything up just right, uh, you will get a nice snug fit. And that's why I think uh, keeping all this stuff safe somewhere is important if you do switch your phone frequently or get a new case every once in a while. You'll probably have to resize and refit everything. But it was really nice to see that they put this much effort into making sure your phone will fit without having to pull the case off of it first. And it's pretty easy to get these adapters installed. They just slide right in and snap into place. And I found that the recommendations the card is going to make for you are pretty accurate. I got everything to fit perfectly on the first try here, so that was good. Now, if you have an Android phone, you do need to use a phone that has a USB Type-C connector. I think almost every modern phone now is using one and this will connect to your phone over USB, not Bluetooth. I found, though, that the input lag you're going to experience is going to vary based on the phone. Some Android phones have great USB controllers. Other ones are not so great, so it's hard to come up with one hard and fast number for what you might experience, but on the uh, Google phone here, I found it to be pretty acceptable. Now, the Android controller has a USB Type-C connector here, and this is used for pass-through power. So when you are gaming and you're near a power source, you can plug in and charge your phone while you are playing your games. And I think it's charging here. Yep, it is. And you also get a headphone jack down here as well. So you can plug in a traditional set of headphones and listen to the game privately without having to use Bluetooth. 
On the iPhone controller, it's pretty much the same thing here, uh, but you do get a lightning connector versus the USB Type-C because at the moment, the iPhone uses lightning and that is why this one costs a little bit more. You've got to have that lightning connector here for your iPhone to interface with and then of course pass through with another lightning connector here. This also though has a headphone jack which of course is lacking on most iPhones these days so you can plug your headphones in and listen through the controller when it is plugged in. As you can see here there are a few extra buttons on the iOS version uh, that is to accommodate some things that its app does but also uh, some of the game uh, extensions that Apple has put into place on their platform. So let's take a look now and see what it's like to actually play games on one of these controllers and we'll begin with the D-pad here first. Uh, so what I'm doing now is playing a little bit of Legend of Zelda inside of RetroArch and as you'll see here as I rock my fingers back and forth it does occasionally pick up an errant diagonal so the D-pad is not spectacular here for 8-bit gaming, although, and let me switch games here for a second, it's not bad everywhere. Now if we play through something like Contra here, you can see it's not as bad, but it is pretty sensitive if I just very slightly apply some weight to the top or bottom of that D-pad there. So from a precision standpoint, it's not quite where I'd like a D-pad to be, especially for 8-bit gaming. It doesn't necessarily feel like a deal breaker to me, but I am occasionally getting a diagonal that I did not intend to make while playing some of these games that I have a lot of muscle memory for. In the case of Contra here, pretty much 30 years worth. Now the analog sticks feel pretty nice on this. I prefer them to what I experienced on the Razer Kishi. As you can see, the sticks themselves are not as large as the Kishi, and there is far less of a dead zone here. Just a little bit of movement here is all it takes to get things registered on screen. Now, additionally, the triggers here are analog triggers, both on the Android platform and iOS platform, and it's overall a pretty nice, all-inclusive uh, controller package here. There is no rumble, though so you won't feel anything, but I think from a control standpoint for more modern games, it's pretty good here with the analog sticks. I also tested out some game streaming services on it, both Xbox Cloud Gaming and GeForce Now. Right now we're running Xbox Cloud Gaming on my iPhone 14 Pro, and all is good here. It was the same experience on the Android side. The analog sticks here feel great on both platforms and all in a very nice game controller experience on your smartphone, whether you're playing games native to your platform or on a service. And I think the work that they did here to get the phones to fit properly really makes a big difference. Now, both the iPhone and Android have apps available for the controller, but they don't do much other than just launch games and update the firmware. You can't adjust the settings or the dead zones or any of the button mapping or anything like that but maybe at some point in the future they can enhance those applications to provide more features. On the iPhone, it kept bugging me to install the app every time I attach the controller, so you will want to probably get that app installed at least on the iOS side so it stops popping messages up on you, but I didn't find much utility with their app at the moment. So overall, I think they did a nice job with this controller. It is a very nice improvement over the Razer Kishi, especially when it comes to fit. If you got a case on, you will find something that works here. And I found that both of my phones, one with a case and one without, were both able to fit very comfortably inside of this controller. On the iOS side, they actually have these little rubber things for phones that are not in cases at all. So they kind of thought of everything, I think, in trying to get the best fit for your device when you plug it in. The D-pad here is not great, but the analog controls are. And I think if you are somebody that's doing a lot of cloud gaming or playing games that rely mostly on the analog sticks, you're going to be happy with what GameVice has put together here. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.